Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about creating new materials in 3D Invigorator and also how to use texture maps with those uh, new materials. So let's dive into it. So you can see that we've got a material already applied to our text, and that's showing up in the material editor. And that's great, that's a nice material. But we want something a little bit different, so we're going to come up to the Materials command and select New Material. One thing to point out is that anytime that you edit a material in the Material Editor that's already been saved, so you can see here's our Material Swatch down in the Material Swatches palette. If we make adjustments to this up in the Material Editor, all these changes that we make up here are going to be saved to that Material Swatch. So if you don't want the changes you make to be permanent, you're either going to have to create a new material or duplicate this one. And we'll cover both of those in this tutorial. But first off, we're going to create a brand new material. So let's come up to the Materials commands and select New Material. And this is going to create a blank material, kind of a uh, white plastic, gray plastic material. And I'm going to add a texture map to this. And I do that by selecting on the color picture icon here. And so instead of having a color, we're going to use a texture map. So I'll click on that. And I will come down and select the paneling map. And this is going to give us a beautiful cheap wood look. And I can apply that to my text and see what that looks like. And I render that out. And that kind of gives us a uh, kind of gives us a plywood looking type of look, or perhaps a uh, IKEA laminate type of look, something that we always want to go for in our our materials. And so I'm going to name this, surprisingly enough, cheap wood. And now I'm going to come down to our materials commands again, or up to our materials commands, and select save material to bin. And what that is going to do is now save that to our material swatches. So you can see that I've got my cheap wood down here. So if I make any adjustments to this, this is going to affect what this preset now looks like. So I kind of like this preset, and so when I make changes, I don't really want it to change this preset. So what I'm going to do is come up and select Duplicate Material. And that's going to create a new material based on my saved preset, my saved cheap wood. And what I want to do with this is add a bump map. So I'm going to use a, the exact same map as my bump map. Come down, select paneling. And if I crank up the bumpiness and then go ahead and apply this to the text, you'll see what that gives us. So I've got much more texture now. It looks a lot more tactile like there's ridges and bumps on the wood surface. And so I'm going to name this cheap bumpy wood. And then again, go up to my materials commands and save material. If I don't do that, all these changes that I make, all this work that I'm putting into this is not going to get saved. You have to manually save any material that you want to create. And so that looks pretty good. We've got our two saved materials down here. We've got some nice looking cheap wood. It no longer has that IKEA feel to it because there's some bumpiness applied to it. It's no longer the flat faux wood laminate that's usually plastered on top of those types of things. But yet we are not satisfied. We want yet more materials. Luckily, Invigorator gives you lots of ways to do that. So let's uh, go up to our materials commands again and select new material and this will start things all over again. Again, if we had modified the cheap bumpy wood texture, anything that we had done up here would affect the preset down here. And since we like this preset and we want to keep it and we don't want to make changes to it, we don't want to make any changes up here when this is selected or when this is active up here. So for that reason, to get rid of that preset out of the material editor, it's best just to come up and do a new material and just start from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, select another texture map. We're, again, we're not going to just use this color. We're just going to use a texture map. 
and we'll come down to our foreign tiles where is it there it is and we'll select that and again I'm going to use this as a bump map so let's uh, again grab the foreign tiles for use as our bump map as well as our texture map and we'll crank that up a bit and we'll apply that to our text and you can see what that gives us kind of a nice cracked tile type of look and again we will save that out so we will name this funky tiles again go up to materials commands and save material to bin and you can see that will save that out there and so this is just how you go about creating new materials you can either just start from scratch and do the new material from the materials commands or you can take your material here and do a duplicate material and use this preset as the basis for a new material. And that's what we're going to do here because we've got a little bit of a problem with our funky tiles. They're a little bit too funky along the uh, sides here. Just because of the way Invigorator maps textures onto objects, it does a front projection type of texture mapping, uh, which looks great on the fronts, but occasionally some maps do not look so good along the sides. What we would like is for these lines to match up with the cracks on the front face and that's not going to happen. So the best way to deal with this when this type of thing happens is to use multiple materials on your objects. And so in this case I'm going to turn off the bump maps and I'm just going to sample a color from the original texture map and I'm going to apply this just to the edges. Now we might, might actually want to have some bumpiness in there, so I'm going to change this bump map from what we originally used to one of the files called Graystone, which makes a good kind of generic bump map texture for anything stone or organic material. And I'm going to save this out as something called Funky Tile Color. And again, save that to our material bin. And then I'm going to go over to our profile viewer and add this in just on the sides of the object. So you can see that in the profile viewer, and there's a whole other tutorial talk that talks about the profile viewer. So I'm not going to go into too much detail right here. But you can have multiple materials in your material palette and use those in the profile. So we can grab our second material here and apply it to the sides. And you'll see that that's just applied to the side. I still have our original funky tiles on the front, but now I have the funky tile color just along the sides. And we can see what that looks like if I render out a preview. And that looks a lot better than having a bunch of random lines that are all over the sides of the object. And so the great thing is, you know, now we've got multiple materials applied to this object. It's a much more complex material than just any of the simple ones in the material swatches. And so now we can go to our object styles and actually save this out as a, another type of texture. So if I go to my object style swatches, go to the menu here and save object style, it will now save this and I can always come back to this later at some other point in time. So if I switch to a different object style, say if I want to have a, like a rock surface, and that looks fine, but if I want to come back to my funky tiles, I can just double click on my object style and get it back. And again, anytime you want to save something like this, just set up a material in the material palette and the profile viewer. You can have as many of these points as you want, so you can mix and match up to six different materials all around your object. And you just come over to the object style palette and click save object style. And I'll save that combination out permanently and you can always come back to it later just as you can always come back to the material swatches when you create them up in the material editor so hopefully you found that informative check out digitalanarchy.com for a lot more tutorials and demo files and other free goodies and thanks for joining me and see you next time